Okay, as you can see, this tutorial is the second in a series. And if you haven't watched the first tutorial, which was on setting up a secure computer, we highly recommend you go and watch that now because you can't really have a secure connection without a secure computer anyway, and vice versa. In this demo, I'm actually gonna be installing an ad blocker and a VPN on Ubuntu Linux. Let's get started. Okay, so what is a secure connection? Well, firstly, it's using a LAN or sometimes called Ethernet or network cable and certainly not using Wi-Fi. As I'm sure you've seen before, here's a typical network cable and sometimes they're black or gray or different colors, but they're certainly bigger than a telephone cable. And Wi-Fi is super convenient. You can move around from room to room or around the office with your device and still stay connected. The problem is because you're connected to a remote device, that means that anyone else connected to that device can actually intercept, change, or do something malicious to every single piece of data that's being sent and received from your device. Nowadays, Wi-Fi routers can actually transmit up to about 50 meters. So even if you're at home with your laptop sitting two meters away from your Wi-Fi router, it's still actually transmitting a signal maybe up to 50 meters to all your neighbors or if you're at work to your entire office space or, or beyond. Even though there is a way to use Wi-Fi securely, it's just not worth it. And we highly recommend using a network or LAN cable. So find yourself a desktop computer or a laptop with a LAN port or ethernet port. Secondly, we wanna check that a website has a valid certificate. And what that means is basically the website that we're going to is actually the website that it actually is and how to prove that. And if we look here, I'm sure you've seen this before, HTTPS, the S stands for secure. And what we wanna do, we wanna check two things. Most browsers display that similar kind of information. You've got a padlock and I'm using Firefox, so it's actually green, but Chrome and Safari and other browsers show something similar. And I wanna check two things. Number one, I wanna make sure that the website is actually using HTTPS. And you can even sort of double check that by just going to the actual address again. You don't need www. And this is a major exchange, Poloniex. And if I just hit enter, it should then default or redirect back to HTTPS, which it does. So that's great. Firefox tells it's green and everything's good. If you want to go to coinbase.com, just simply go to the website directly. Don't click on a link in the email or do anything like that. Type it in, don't bookmark it, just type it in directly. And if you're unsure, double check it using the certificate and make sure that the owner is actually coming up as the same name as the website. Thirdly, we need to use an ad blocker. An ad blocker obviously blocks ads, but it does a lot more than that. One thing that it does is actually reduces the page load. So when you're viewing a website, sometimes there's 20, 30% of ads and other stuff happening in the background. So it'll give you a better and faster experience, which is great. Another thing it does is actually blocks tracking. So some social media platforms and other ad agencies actually track wherever you go. So you might be logged off from these certain social media platforms, but they'll still track you as you move around the web, whether it's shopping websites or blogs or whatever that. Most importantly though, it actually prevents you from malicious or what is called bad ads. Now, kind of like a firewall or an antivirus, an ad blocker actually doesn't enable those ads to actually load onto your system or onto your browser. Apart from just having a way better browsing experience, you can protect yourself from tracking, privacy, and also most importantly, malicious ads. We'll have a look at that in the demo later on. Last but certainly not least is you must use a virtual private network, VPN. And we'll have a look at how, what that is and how it works and some of the not so subtle differences between free and paid VPNs. I'm gonna to link to this article in the description of the video because it's excellent. And essentially you've gone from no VPN where all your data is in clear text or unencrypted to using a VPN to connect to, and then that VPN connects to whatever resource 
you want to connect to. So the entire connection from your computer to the website or resource on the internet is completely encrypted. So previously I mentioned that HTTPS gives us a secure connection between our web browser and the website, which is great, but it's a limited connection and it is encryption based on web traffic only. And in reality, what that means is that it really only gives us a secure connection from our router to the website or whatever resource that we're looking at. VPN goes one step further and actually gives us a full encrypted connection from our computer to the internet. And it does that by connecting our device to a VPN server. And then that VPN server then connects to whatever device on the internet. Now, without going to specifics and the difference of encryption technologies, essentially that gives us a hundred percent full encryption. There are differences between free and paid VPN servers, which we'll have a look at in a moment, but essentially we can be guaranteed that if we have a VPN connection, that any malicious actors, any hackers along the way might be able to see our traffic, but what they'll see is encrypted traffic. So it seems like using a VPN is the best solution. You get a complete secure connection between your device and whatever you're trying to access online. Why not just use it all the time then? Well, as you can see from the diagram, it does create extra traffic. So you have to connect to the VPN and depending on the location of the VPN server, that then connects to whatever website or resource and then back again. So potentially you could be looking at a connection of two or three times slower or even more. So while a VPN certainly provides security, it is a lot slower than a traditional connection. Internet banking, buying Bitcoin, use a VPN. Skype or streaming your favorite sports game, no VPN. As you might expect, there's a significant difference between a paid VPN and free VPN. A free VPN provides security, whereas a paid VPN provides security plus privacy. Now a free VPN might be fine for your needs and in the demo, we're going to have a look at a free VPN, but just be aware that you're paying somehow you're either paying with your data that is being sent to third parties. So the logs of the website you're visiting, the IP addresses, where you're going and metadata, or they're limiting your connection in some way, either by time or by actual amount that you're downloading and uploading paid VPNs. You obviously get what you pay for. Um, a lot of them don't have any limits and some of them are as cheap as two to three dollars per month. But if you do a search for best paid VPNs, you'll come across some of these fairly common names. I'm not going to recommend a VPN because it really depends on your budget and it also depends on your location. The VPN that I use is actually free uh, because it's actually in country. Whereas if I'm traveling around, then I actually have a paid alternative. All right, so now we're ready to do the demo and you might be thinking this is a huge hassle and a lot of effort just to buy some Bitcoin, but this is based on industry best practices and our own experience and there's no bank. So we need to be responsible for our own money. And when it comes to privacy, security and our own money, I think you can't be paranoid enough because there's no credit card company or anyone that you can call up and get your funds reimbursed. There is no recourse. So without further ado, let's install an ad blocker and VPN add on. So installing add ons is actually pretty easy. So the first add on we're going to install is called uBlock Origin, which is without a doubt the best ad blocker, not only for ad blocking, but for all the other points that we mentioned, click on the menu, go to add ons. And we don't have any extensions anyway, so let's go find more add-ons. And search for U block origin. Again, all this information will be in the description of the video. So there are a couple of U block, you know, different versions or whatever, but we're looking for U block origin. Click on that, add to Firefox. Add, 
and we're done. Now your block origin is installed. We can see it up here on the right hand corner. Go to any website, um, microsoft.com. Okay, and you block origin is telling us that it's blocked all these ads and 33% of the web page, which is good because it makes our browser experience better and it's not tracking anything. Now, if you ever have, to, if a site's not loading, occasionally what happens is, you know, there, there was something that was blocked that was actually needed to display something, then you can actually turn it off. So for example, if this is a site that you trust, click on uBlock Origin, turn it off, reload the page, and it will be back to how you want it. That's it, super easy. Turn that back on. So that's uBlock Origin. So now you have uBlock Origin installed. Let's install a VPN. Installing a VPN is fairly straightforward, just like uBlock Origin. We go to Add-ons, find my add-ons. And I'm actually gonna show you two VPNs because I've had mixed results with both of them in different locations. So, yeah, I mean, if you type in VPN, you get actually quite a lot of results. The two we're actually going to look at, one is called Hox, or however you pronounce it, H O W X. Click on that. Add to Firefox. Okay, and the other one is called Tunnel Bear. These are probably the two most popular VPNs. Tunnel Bears has come out with a new version for Firefox. So All right, so we've got both our VPNs here. Now, one of the unfortunate things is you have to actually sign up for an account and that's pretty standard with all the free VPNs. So go ahead and sign up for both TunnelBear and Hox VPN. Hopefully use an account that uh, isn't too important to you or get spam account or anything like that. So go and sign up. Once you've signed up and logged in, you can start using your VPNs. I've actually found for me at my current location, Hox VPN is extremely slow. So you're gonna to have to do a little bit of trial and error depending on where you are and if you can find a server close by. So I'm gonna use TunnelBear. And at the moment I'm connected to Japan. So let's go to say Australia, connect it to that. And you can use a website like uh, mylocation.org or you can just Google what is my location and that can find where your connection is. All right. So now I'm connected to Sydney, Australia. So have a bit of a play around. Mileage will vary with the different VPNs. And remember there is a pretty big difference between free and paid VPNs. So if you're serious about Bitcoin and you're going to be doing frequent trading or at least managing wallets and moving your money in and out of exchanges. Uh, I highly recommend using a paid VPN for as little as only two or $3 a month. Uh, it's highly worth it. And you're going to get the privacy of them not having a look at your logs or your IP addresses. So just double check the terms and conditions and uh, good luck. So if you've made it this far, congratulations. Well done. You have a secure computer and secure connection. And I will look forward to seeing you in the next video. Cheers. Thanks for watching. All resources mentioned are in the description of this video. With your Bitcoin Basics Video Guides purchase, you also gain access to this video series for 30 days, Coin Corner newsletters for three months, 20% off any help desk credits for three months, Bitcoin Begins booklet, the full edition, PSAs, these are emergency alerts for three months as well. Visit coincompass.com and click on Members to gain access to any of the above and to check out our latest news, events, and updates. Any content provided by CoinCompass is for educational and informational purposes only and is not investment, legal, tax, or any other advice. A qualified professional should be consulted before making any financial decisions. CoinCompass is not a money transmitter nor broker, so cannot buy Bitcoin or any other cryptocurrency assets on your behalf. Coin Compass will at times recommend certain products, services, and technologies, but these are opinions based upon our experience and not endorsements. 
We take no liability for out-of-date or inaccurate information, software bugs, manufacturing errors, technology misuse, or issues involving third parties.